Hello and welcome to another Stogie Review Video Cigar Review. I am Walt White, and this time around I have a Short Ashes Review. If you're not familiar with uh, these types of reviews, the intention is that we kind of make them relatively quick, or at least I try to make them relatively quick. Uh, they tend to run <laughs> longer than I expect, but that's neither here nor there. And we revisit a cigar that we've reviewed in the past. Now, the cigar that we've reviewed in the past is the Cabaguan by Tatawahe Cigars. I actually got this cigar from Jerry. He was kind enough to send me uh, a package in the mail recently, and it had a, a couple of different uh, Tatawahe cigars in there. Uh, the Cabaguan being one, and uh, La Cas the La Casita Criollo being another, which I already smoked and enjoyed quite a bit. So... I really can't tell you a whole lot about the cigar. My my experience with Tatawahe is extremely limited. In fact, it, it seems over the last couple of years, it seems as though the only time I smoke a Tatawahe cigar is a couple times a year. You know, around uh, you know Cigar Expo, Cigar Fest, whenever Pete is in town and I bump into him, is about the only time I, I smoke Tatawahe product. It's not available local, or at least it, it didn't used to be. Um, my my preferred shop was Kensington, Toba Kensington Tobacconist in West Reading. And they closed up some time ago. Uh, the really depressing thing about that is it's now a Subway sandwich shop. And, uh, you know, the, the place had just had so much potential. And now they're throwing around cold cuts. But uh, at any rate, uh, my home shop never carried Tatawahe. They were very slow to bring in newer product and uh, very timid, you know, based on you know, customer reactions and, and things like that. So Tatawahe was never anything that was added to the ranks. Uh, there are a couple of other shops in the area, none of which I think carry Tatawahe product, although there's one shop that I hear may. I just haven't gotten over to look at it. It's not uh, It's not your traditional uh, cigar shop. It's uh, it's like a convenience store, but the, the owner has connections. His brother apparently has a very large shop in the New York area, and uh, as a result, the brother buys the product and distributes it to the younger brother who owns the convenience store. Uh, you can't smoke in there, and it's just kind of weird having potato chips and cigars in the same place for sale, you know, with tuna fish and bread. It's just kind of odd, but... Uh, at one of these one of these days I need to get over there and take a look but uh, recently uh, a new cigars international superstore was opened up in the Hamburg area it's about 25 minutes 30 minutes from home and they do carry Tatawahe product that's where I've been buying the La Casita Criollo as of late uh, as well as the the red band I guess it's uh, Havana 6 every every time I go up there you know I, I try to pick up something different and you know I usually try to pick up uh, Tatawahe and some other stuff or you know an illusion and some other stuff you know mix in some of the older boutique brands that have been around a while that I that I just haven't had a whole lot of experience with in the past although illusion is something I used to buy quite a bit but uh, you know we're kind of getting off topic here so let's go ahead I'm gonna light up the cigar see how it goes and uh, you know we'll take a look at that first third or actually more more than likely that first half well, it's been a little bit now, maybe 30 minutes, and I thought I'd turn the camera back on, talk a little bit about what I'm experiencing with the cigar, and then maybe come back one more time and wrap it up and, and call it a review. Uh, at two different points in the cigar, I've had the wrapper kind of pop on me, and it's really not a big deal, and I don't know if I'm even remotely close enough to the camera where you can see that, but... Uh, it appears as though the cigar is swelling a little bit, and uh, just a piece of the wrapper pops. It looks kind of ugly, but generally I burn through it, and then this is actually the second time it's popped up. So if it's anything like the first time this happened, it's going to be a non-issue as far as construction goes, and we'll just burn right through it. Uh, I am hitting little instances where the, the smoke volume is, is being reduced, and I have to pull on the cigar a little bit harder. Uh, it's not a huge deal at this point, but it is a, it's a minor nuisance. The flavor profile is, is really interesting. It's, it's woody, it's got a little bit of a nutty flavor to it, and the, the lingering aftertaste is, is creamy, but at the same time, it's got a little bit of a sour note and a little bit of a spicy component. And generally, when I refer to something as being sour, it's, it, it's generally uh, a negative aspect of the cigar. In this case, it's it's kind of neutral. It's not turning me off, but at the same time, it's not wowing me either. Uh, it's just kind of an interesting flavor component. And, you know, in the grand scheme of things, I'm enjoying the cigar, but uh, I'm pretty confident 
to say that this isn't one of my favorite Tatawahe products. Uh, this is actually something that that I don't know that I would go seeking out. If there were other Tatawahe options available, uh, this is probably further down on the list of the ones that I would reach out and, and pick off a shelf. Uh, for the moment, the smoke volume is really good. It's thick. It coats the palette well. Um, one of the things I didn't mention earlier on was the construction. Uh, Pre-light, it was impeccable. It just it looked beautiful. Really small veins, uh, no defects, no flaws that stood out. Uh, little tiny pigtail, flaggy sort of little nub on the end. Uh, you know, to dress it up a little bit. I, I thought that the cigar looked really good. Uh, smoke volume is good for the most part you know again there are little situations that pop up where the smoke volume reduces and if I look at the foot you know I can see a tiny little tunnel developing generally you burn right past them um, you know I've got these little popped wrapper areas again burning through them without much issue so uh, construction is solid I mean it's it's just cosmetic for the most part and uh, and the, the flavor profile is interesting so we're off to a really good start at this point uh, the the body is maybe mild to medium. The first puff was was uh, really robust, and I thought, wow, you know, what am I getting myself into first thing in the morning? Uh, you know, this is a lot of cigar, but uh, it's mellowed out and it's it's smoking very well with a cup of coffee. Well, we're coming down the home stretch now, and I've got to say, this, the cigar is getting uh, better. Uh, not that it was bad before, but uh, the cigar is is picking up richness. It's picking up some complexity. Uh, all of the flavors, each independent flav flavor profile seems to be uh, becoming more robust, more apparent, uh, you know, just uh, laying on the palate a bit heavier. And the, the resulting flavor profile, you know, the whole mixture, the whole taste of the cigar, uh, in essence, is, is building. And, you know, I'm, I'm really happy with that. It's... It's still got the same woody flavors. Uh, it's got some nutty flavors. It still has a, a nice drawn out creamy aftertaste. The little bit of sourness that I was getting before is is turning to a little bit of bitterness. And I really don't mind the bitterness at all. I, I think it goes really well with the rest of the flavors, which in turn goes really well with coffee. So in terms of taste, uh, you know, I'm really happy with it. Uh, it's not the best cigar that, that Pete Johnson makes as far as the, you know, the Tatawahe, the, the, the standard Tatawahe lineup goes. But it's something that I would most certainly smoke at a later date. Um, you know, if I were walking into a cigar shop with a variety of Tatawahe products and, and was told I could only pick one, uh, the, the chances of me picking up the Cabaguan are, are really slim. You know, I'd be much more inclined to reach for the, the, the Havana 6. You know, it's a, it's a lesser priced cigar. It's, it's more abundant. And uh, I just kind of like that cigar a bit more. I think the, the flavor profiles is just more appealing to me. Uh, the look. The La Casita Criollo is one of Pete's cigars that, uh, it's one of my favorites. Again, I don't have a whole lot of Tatawahe experience. You know, my, I don't have my finger on the pulse of Pete Johnson, but, or Tatawahe cigars in general, but, you know, it's one of those cigars that I think is absolutely fantastic that comes out of uh, the Pete Johnson camp. And while this is very good, I don't think it stacks up to a lot of the other uh, Tatawahe offerings. So there's there you have it, I suppose. Uh, you know the the construction is is still good. The smoke volume has gotten better now that I've burned past that small tunnel. Uh, just as I expected, that pop portion of the wrapper burned through it without issue. So all in all, it smokes well, it tastes good, and I would most certainly recommend them. Uh, it's going really, very well with coffee, and it has made a very nice morning companion for me.